Hi everyone. Today I'm going to can the acorn squash. We have quite a few of these. So I'm off work today. I had brakes worked on on my truck and um, took a vacation day so I could try and also continue canning the remainder of our bounty. <laughs> but instead of going through the whole canning video, I just wanted to show you a couple different kinds of squash that and the use of how you can uh, cut them up easily because the skins are pretty tough as you saw from my butternut video <laughs> it was so tough to get through that um, but anyway we're going to attempt to do the acorns today I won't take you through the whole canning process because it's pretty much repetitive you know repetitive as far as um, canning winter squash I just wanted to show you some of our varieties here we go First of all, I'm going to wash this and get some of the field dirt off. And um, it's a nice big one here. I know these are super hard to cut through, so I'm only going to try a small batch the first time around. But I'm just basically going to go through and rinse the dirt off. Get a little of that um, soil off of there. And I have a reason. Uh, Sam told me, he says, you realize why I turn in or bring in all this stuff with field dirt still on it. I don't clean it off. I don't wash it off. I'm like, no, I just figured you had a lot to pick and, you know, this was easier. <laughs> but um, he actually says he does not like to wash the field dirt off or do anything to them until you're getting ready to prepare them. Um, reason being bruising and uh, fingernails can do a lot of damage to squash and you get one little ding or something and that's just... Uh, an area that bugs can attract to. So that's a reason that if any of you have received some of our goods this year, it still has field dirt on it. Sammy won't wash it off because of the issue of um, um, deterioration of the fruit. So on we go. Okay, let's see how we want to do this. Um, I have one person that tells me, I want to just try this. I mean, you can do it like this, peeling it. But you see, you've got all these little indentations. So, I saw a friend do this, and I'm going to try something just a little different. Because this, to me, seems too tedious doing it that way. There's got to be a better way. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to try and cut into this and see uh, what's going on inside. It is tough to get through the first couple cuts. And if I was going to make this for dinner, I probably would have to cut it this way and scoop everything out and put the butter and brown sugar and all that other stuff in there. But for this reason right now, what I'm doing is cutting it in half lengthwise. Once you get in there, it's not too bad, but it is tough to cut through. Um, which I knew that would happen with acorn squash. It's always that way. My theory is I can cut each one of these, once I cut it open and scoop it, I can actually slice each one of these segments and peel them that way. At least that's what I'm going to attempt to do here. Once I get it open, without cutting myself, <laughs> I like to wear these gloves because any kind of squash, summer squash, winter squash, it all leaves like a re really weird residue on your skin that even after you wash your hands, you know, next couple times of washing your hands, you still feel it. It's kind of creepy. But <laughs> I just like to wear the gloves. I think it's more sanitary. And um, there she is. I'm going to save some of these seeds for Sammy. The other day when I was doing the Hubbard and the uh, butternut, I just took a piece of wax paper and kind of as I scooped them out, just kind of popped them onto the wax paper. And then we set it out to dry. And then he'll put those away for next year. Now, whether we have weird little kid winter squash next year, I don't know. <laughs> um, he seems to think we might, but we're still going to get some of the regular, um, you know, acorn, etc. But you know how squash is. It's very promiscuous, as Sammy says. So it'll be interesting to see what we get next year. But I'm going to scoop this out and go to the next step. Okay, I was able to get some wedges out of this. My idea is, after seeing it, I uh, thought on somebody else's page, but she kind of cut them up and held them like a gun, and then just 
whittled away at peeling them. This to me seems a lot easier than trying to peel them whole. Keep going. I can't use my other peeler too, I'm sure. That looks pretty good though. Here's the other peeler. The only thing is I'm afraid this thing's going to slip out of my hand. Actually, this one feels a little better in my hand to use. But that's pretty easy work of getting that skin off of there. Pretty easy and pretty clean anyway. So there's all the meat that I'll have to chop up and, oops, <laughs> and can. Hi everyone, today we're going to can the Hubbard squash. These are Hubbard. And I don't know if you can tell, but we've had a little issue with something in the garden. Deer. Deer chews. So, naturally I have to process these right away. Sam just picked them and brought them in, but he said they can't just eat one whole Hubbard. They have to nibble and then walk away. Here's another mark. What I'm going to do is peel them and cut around that and um, salvage the meat and can them up. Here's the, here's the before and after of the peeling. Before and after. And I'm going to chop it open so you can see how it looks inside. Here's the inside of the Hubbard. Hopefully I didn't get too close. Seed's a lot bigger, which I've been trying to save seeds for Sam as I go. But you can see it's got a huge seed pod. But there's still quite a bit of meat. I peeled this one. Got rid of the uh, deer damage. And now I'm going to scoop this out. Typically I do it with a spoon, but I wanted you to see just how deep that cavity is. So we're going to chop this up just like our um, butternut and our kashaw. And I'm going to can this too. We've got a lot of squash to go around, folks. Any of you that are local, let me know if you want some. Send me a message on email or Facebook.